When I sing, I don't want them to see that my face is black. I don't want them to see that my face is white. I want them to see my soul, and that is colorless. Marion Anderson was born on February 27, 1897 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She was the oldest in her family and attended high school for music. After that, she applied to many different music colleges, which she did not get accepted to because of her race. Anderson from the start was an amazing opera singer. Her voice teacher once said, a voice like yours is heard once in a hundred years. She started singing at her church at age six, and from then on, she was a hit throughout her entire town. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got to gamble. She was on high demand to sing around her town, so she started charging $5 a pop. Though she was starting to get a good name for herself in the business, it was hard for her to sing anywhere because of her race. So Anderson headed over to Europe to start her career. Like to be part of your Christmas. In Europe, things were a lot easier. African Americans were not discriminated against, and she could sing wherever she pleased. Thank you. Marion, once having the proper training in opera, started to become really successful in Europe. She had tours all over and learned how to sing in many different languages like German, French, and Italian. Once Anderson had all the confidence that her career was rather big, she headed back over to America. She still had the fans, but not all the support. Things were hard. She was not allowed all the luxuries of living in Europe. He's got the moon and the stars. In his hands he's got the wind and the rain. In America, she was forced to stay in slum hotels during her tours. All of her audiences were segregated, and she was not allowed any of the top venues. Europe was the complete opposite. No one cared about her color. They saw through that to her amazing talents. In America, people thought less of her because her skin was black, just like every other African American entertainer. Her most famous attempt was to play at Constitution Hall. It was one of the most respected places to play, and very big as well. Constitution Hall was run by the Daughters of the American Revolution, who refused Anderson's request because they had a white-only policy. Eleanor Roosevelt, who was on this board, heard about this and went straight to the Daughters of the American Revolution. Miss Roosevelt and others quit the board and got married a spot to sing at the Lincoln Memorial on Easter Sunday in 1939. On that day, Anderson attracted more than 75,000 people of all colors to the Lincoln Memorial. She sang songs like My Country Tis of Thee, Gospel Train, and Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. Nation's most impressive Easter demonstration. 75,000 mass before Lincoln Memorial to hear Marian Anderson, colored contralto, make her capital debut at the Great Emancipator Shrine. Refusal of the DAR to let her use their hall and a countrywide controversy with this great gathering as the climax. she, an African-American woman, could pull together 75,000 people of all races in the 1930s, when other African-Americans could not even buy her album in a normal store. After this concert, she was asked what it was like accepting this venue. 
I said yes, but the yes did not come easily or quickly. I do not like a lot of show, and one could not tell in advance what direction the affair would take. I studied my conscience. As I thought further, I could see that my significance as an individual was small in this affair. I had become, whether I liked it or not, a symbol representing my people. Mary went on to do more tours around America. Though things for African Americans have still not changed, they kept pushing forward. Anderson said, Sometimes it's like a hair across your cheek. You can't see it, you can't find it with your fingers, but you keep brushing because of the feel of its irritation. After the DAR had seen the reaction from the people after denying Anderson, they thought it over and revoked the white only law once and for all. Married in 1943, finally got to sing at that same venue. After the fact, she said about it, I felt no different than I had in any other hall. There was no sense of triumph. I felt that it was a beautiful concert hall, and I was very happy to sing in it. Finally, Marion graduated from Princeton University in 1959 with an honorary degree in music. She was one of the first African Americans to be accepted and graduate. Anderson left a legacy on the African American entertainment industry because, in many ways, she showed everyone not to fight back. When Anderson came across a problem, she didn't argue or cause other problems. She stood back and found another solution to the problem. If I were inclined to be a combative, I suppose I might insist on making an issue out of these things, but that is not my nature. I always bear in mind that my mission is to leave behind me the kind of impression that will make it easier for those who follow. Leotine Price, an African American soprano opera singer, was said to be the first artist to benefit from Anderson's impact. Price once said, Her example of professionalism, uncompromising standards, Overcoming obstacles, persistence, resiliency, and undaunted spirits inspired me to believe that I could achieve goals that otherwise would have been unthought of. Anderson early on insisted on vertical seating in her audiences, which meant that African American audience members were allowed seats in all parts of the auditorium. Many times past the 1950s, if the venue did not comply with Anderson's request, she would not sing there. This was one of the first times any African American had sat anywhere other than the back. Mary Anderson was a strong woman, who in turn was the first African American woman artist to have a popular career. She knew she had to make a difference, and was not going to stop until it was normal for any other African American to stand up in front of an audience and entertain until their heart's content. She was a hero.